What's up guys? So today is Samsung versus Samsung day. We have the S24 Ultra versus the S24 Plus. Samsung's two latest phones going head to head with each other. The S24 Ultra is powered by the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the S24 Plus model is powered by Samsung's new Exynos 2400. Is the Exynos chipset going to match up to the mighty Snapdragon? Well, we will certainly find out in this video along with the main differences between these two smartphones covering everything from the design, display, chipset, camera samples, gaming, benchmarks and lots lots more. And by the end of the video, you should have a pretty good idea between these two smartphones. Now, let's start off with the prices. The S24 Ultra starts from 1249 for the 12 plus 256 variant. And the S24 Plus starts from 999 for the 8 plus 256 variant. So around 250 pounds cheaper than the Ultra. So let's see if the Ultra is worth that extra money. So how do they feel in my hands? Well, both phones have a similar feel and finish although different build qualities. The S24 Ultra has a titanium frame and Gorilla Glass armor back with a beautiful matte finish and the color is called titanium gray. The S24 Plus has armor aluminium frame going all the way around with Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the back and again, beautiful matte finish. And this color is called Cobalt Violet and I think it looks really nice. So we've got a similar camera design minus two sensors on the plus model and the actual specs of the cameras are also quite different and we're coming to that a little bit later in the video. Both phones do not pick up fingerprints and both feel super premium in the hands. Furthermore, both phones have flat edges and both feature IP68 certification. Now this phone here, the S24 Plus, actually is quite reminiscent to the iPhone 15 Plus model. Um, very similar design and build quality. Of course, not a bad thing. I really do like the design of the Plus model. Now, if we flip these phones around, now on the front, both feature beautiful Quad HD Plus dynamic AMOLED 2X displays. The S24 Ultra has a 6.8 inch screen versus 6.7 inch on the Plus model. Both feature the same resolution, that's 3120 by 1440. Both support 120 hertz refresh and HDR10 plus, and they both support adaptive refresh. So the display can automatically switch to the best refresh rate, depending on what you're doing. And they both also give you the option of 60 hertz all the time, but you can't select 120 hertz all the time. Both phones also feature Gorilla Glass protection. The S24 Ultra has Gorilla Glass armor, and the S24 Plus has last year's Gorilla Glass Victus 2. Now both screens are no doubt super bright and they both support 2600 nits of peak brightness. Now both phones of course have the same always on display features so you can download plenty of AOD themes for free from the Galaxy App Store and activate them with a simple touch. Really nice AOD options that you can download from here. Furthermore, both phones are fairly slim and light. The S24 Ultra is 8.6 millimeters versus 7.7 millimeters and weighs 232 grams versus 196 grams. Now let's quickly compare the ports. So at the bottom of the S24 Ultra, you have an S Pen slot, you've got loudspeaker, USB-C port, primary microphone, and a dual 5G SIM tray. The Plus model has dual 5G SIM tray, primary mic, USB-C port, and loudspeaker. On this side, they both have their volume rocker and power buttons. And on top, you can see their microphones. So there is no IR blaster on either of these phones. And on the other side, we have nothing. Now, I just want to quickly confirm both phones are dual SIM 5G and they both support eSIM. Other differences, if we talk about battery capacity, the S24 Ultra has a 5000 mAh battery and supports 45 watt fast charging. The Plus model has 4900 mAh battery and also supports 45 watt fast charging, which is quite amazing. So this year they upgraded the battery and the charging speed, exactly what we wanted, we got. Um, furthermore, both also support wireless charging at 15 watts, uh, but unfortunately neither phone comes with a charger in the box. Now let's talk about sound. Both phones feature stereo speakers and you can see we have Dolby Atmos activated from within the quick settings. We're going to see how they both sound. Here we go. Dolby Atmos test.
with that brief sound test, it's really hard to tell them apart. I think they both sounded amazing. They both were on par with each other. They both were loud. Clarity was great. The virtual 360 surround sound effect with Atmos sounded amazing on both. Equally good speakers in both phones. All right, so now let's talk about the processing power. The S24 Ultra features the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is a four nanometer octa-core clocked at 3.3 gigahertz. And we have the Adreno 750 graphics. And the Plus model is powered by the Exynos 2400, which is a 10 core CPU clocked at 3.2 gigahertz with Eclipse 940 graphics. And looking at the benchmark results, you can see the S24 Ultra achieves 1.8 million in Antutu, 2 and the Plus model achieves a score of 1.7 million. Also compare the temperatures, so starting temperatures of both S24 Ultra 33.9 degrees versus 31.2 degrees. And the temperatures after concluding the test, we have 41.1 degrees versus 44.6 degrees. So it looks like the Plus model heated up a little bit more during the end of this test. Furthermore, both phones feature LPDDR5 RAM and UFS4 storage. And I have here the 12 plus 512 variant of the S24 Ultra, and I have the 12 plus 256 variant of the S24 Plus. Other options are available, more info in the description box. Now both phones let you expand the RAM from within settings using virtual RAM taken from your spare storage space. And they both let you expand up to eight gigs of virtual RAM. So that's 12 gigs plus eight gigs, giving you 20 gigs of total RAM in both phones. And to find this feature, go to settings, scroll down until you see device care, tap on memory, scroll to the bottom, and then tap on RAM plus. Now from here, you can expand the RAM up to eight gigs. Just to confirm, neither phone has micro SD expansion. Okay, so now moving on to the gaming performance test, and you can see both phones starting temperatures. They're both at around 31 to 32 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's compare the COD graphic settings. First of all, the S24 Ultra, you can see maximum selectable is very high and max. That is the maximum selectable. If you try to select maximum graphics, it's not available yet. And if you try to select ultra, it will drop the graphics down to medium. So very high and max are your highest options on the ultra. And the Exynos powered S24 Plus allows you to select very high graphics and very high frame rate at the same time. If you try to select max, it will drop the graphics down to high. So very high is the highest option you have um, for this chipset. You can see the S24 Ultra offers um, slightly higher options when it comes to frame rate, but unfortunately on the Plus model, Ultra frame rate is not even an option. So I guess Exynos is probably still working on an update uh, to give us a better gaming performance. But as it stands, technically the performance should be much better and well optimized on the Snapdragon powered S24 Ultra. Nevertheless, let's play a game on each phone and I will share the temperatures straight after playing to see how they both fare. Okay, starting off with the S24 Ultra. As alpha, we captured C. All right, quickly check the temperatures. So 41 degrees Celsius as soon as I finish that game. 41 degrees Celsius on the Ultra. Okay, we do the same gaming test on the Plus model. Here we go. Ready for deployment. Nice work. Get ready. 
So plus model was 36 degrees as soon as we finished that one round of COD. Let's make things a bit harder. We're going to open up PUBG Mobile. So S24 Ultra allows you to play in Ultra HDR with Ultra frame rate. The same with the Plus model, Ultra HDR with Ultra graphics. We're just going to play for a few minutes on each and see what sort of performance we can achieve. All right, so Ultra first of all. All right, so that's the Ultra. The S24 Plus. So the S24 Plus, you can see it's glitching a little bit. I'm not sure why. So I want to let this play for a bit longer. You can see again, the water is glitching on the S24 Plus model. And I'm probably being followed. <laughs> I don't think I've got just a handgun. Yeah, we seem to have some issues with the S24 Plus. You can see the water is glitching. We haven't had that issue with the Ultra model. I'm being shot on both. <laughs> don't try this at home, playing PUBG on two phones at the same time. I don't even know how I'm surviving this. So yeah, the S24 Plus is glitching a little bit. Otherwise, the gameplay is smooth. It just seems to be the water that's glitching. Everything else seems to be um, fine on the Plus model. The performance seems good. Just switch straight to the temperatures. Like so. 41 and 38 is what I saw on both. So even though it's slightly warm to the touch, um, it's actually running cooler than the Ultra model. Um, effectively, they're both running at comfortable temperatures. Um, neither phone has overheated during these gaming tests. So pretty much uh, decent gaming performance on both. We saw a slight glitching with the water effects on PUBG Mobile on the Plus model. Um, but otherwise, everything else was smooth. I'm sure a software update will fix that pretty soon. All right, so now it's time to check out the cameras. The S24 Ultra has quad cameras on the back. We've got 200 megapixel primary, 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 50 megapixel telephoto with a 5 and 10x optical zoom, and you have another 10 megapixel telephoto with a 3x optical lens. Interesting camera setup there. S24 Plus has triple cameras on the back. We've got a 50 megapixel primary, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and you have another 10 megapixel telephoto with a 3x optical lens. And on the front of both phones, we have 12 megapixel sensors. Just quickly compare the camera menu so you can see um, exactly the same. We've got portrait, photo, video. So maximum resolution supported is 8K at 30 frames per second, and it also can do 4K 60. If we switch to the front facing cameras, they both can do 4K 60. And if we tap on more, you can see exactly the same options are available on both phones. So under standard photo mode, at the top, if we tap on resolution on the Ultra, you have an option for 12, 50, and 200 megapixels. On the Plus model, if you tap on the megapixels, you have a choice between 12 and 50. So let's just check out a few side-by-side -side camera samples, starting off with video recording. Both phones can shoot at the maximum resolutions, 8K 30, but YouTube will of course compress this video to 4K. So both video clips look beautiful and feature optical image stabilization. So super smooth, stable looking video on both. Next, we have 4K 60. Again, both videos looking great and super smooth stabilization. Now we're switching to the front cameras and maximum video resolutions are 4K 60 with both phones. And, you, and again, you can see pretty decent results from both. Okay, time to compare some photos. Both phones can shoot 12 megapixel bin shots in standard photo mode. Now here are some standard 12 megapixel bin samples from both. We are now comparing 50 megapixel shots. All 
I will also share some ultra wides from both. So both have 12 megapixel ultra wide lenses, and this is what you can expect from both. So interesting results. Do let me know which one you prefer overall. Um, here are a few selfies checked in for good measure. Now this is the part where I share my indoor shots, shooting some random colorful things in my kitchen. Now it's no secret that Samsung phones are really good with zoom. So let's do a quick zoom test. This is 1x zoom, 3x zoom, 5x zoom, and this is 30x zoom on both. Now, maximum zoom on both, we've got 30x on the plus model and 100x on the ultra model. So that was a quick side-by-side -side camera test. Uh, let me know which one you preferred from the two. So moving on, looking at the DRMs, you can see both feature Google Widevine level one certification. If we open up Netflix on both phones, you can see Netflix HDR is supported on both with spatial audio. And here is CPU Z where you can check out and confirm the clock speeds. And you can see at the bottom, the graphics information, we've got Adreno 750 versus Samsung Eclipse 940. Furthermore, both phones are running the latest Android 14 with Samsung's One UI 6.1 on top. Here are the results for the internal disk speeds. The S24 Ultra achieves read speeds of 1439 versus 1391 megabytes per second and write speeds of 766 versus 824 megabytes per second. So the results are quite close, but technically the Ultra has a slightly faster read speed and the Plus has a slightly faster write speed. So there you have it guys. That was my quick comparison test between the Samsung S24 Ultra versus the Samsung S24 Plus. Now this year, the S24 Plus is quite an attractive proposition with bigger battery and faster charging, bringing it slightly closer to the Ultra model. But unfortunately this year, Samsung decided to put their Exynos chip into the S24 and S24 Plus model, and the more expensive Ultra model gets the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So that immediately tells the people, if you want the better and more powerful chipset, go for the S24 Ultra. Now, me personally, I've never been a fan of Exynos chipsets in Samsung phones. There's always been some sort of issue, um, be it a gaming glitch or camera performance issues. Saying that, Samsung does drop regular updates and they usually iron out most of the kinks. But for me, Snapdragon has always held its own as the best chipset option for flagship phones. MediaTek is actually getting better and their latest MediaTek 9300 is impressive as seen in the Vivo X100 Pro. But nevertheless, Exynos is still far away from Snapdragon. I thought after the S23 series last year, we had seen the last of Exynos. But to disappoint some of us, Exynos is back. And I can't lie and pretend that I'm happy to see it back. Samsung could not pay me to big up Exynos. It just wouldn't happen. But if I just push my personal opinions to the side, on a positive note, the S24 Plus design is the closest to iPhone design I have ever seen from a Samsung phone. It feels very similar to an iPhone 15 Plus, uh, and that's not a bad thing at all. Great design, Samsung, good job. Now, apart from the chipset, let me tell you what is the same between these two phones. So you're getting the same quality display, same refresh rate, same Bluetooth, same GPS, NFC. You've got the same always on display. You've got the same in-display fingerprint sensor and face unlock, 45 watt fast charging and wireless charging, same stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos and the same IP68 certifications. And the main difference is we've got Snapdragon versus Exynos, Gorilla Glass Armor versus Gorilla Glass Victus 2, 6.8 inch versus 6.7 inch, titanium frame versus aluminium frame, 200 megapixel primary versus 50 megapixel primary. 24 Ultra has extra camera sensors and better optical zoom capabilities. We have Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6E, 5,000 milliamp hour battery versus 4,900 milliamp hour battery, S Pen versus no S Pen, and 8.6 millimeter thickness versus 7.7 .7 
millimeter thickness although side by side they look exactly the same now to sum it up if you can live with the exynos chipset and i know a lot of you out there can and you don't mind some of those differences that i've mentioned then save yourself 250 pounds and grab the s24 plus model now to be totally honest it's a very nice phone i love the bigger battery and faster charging upgrades that samsung has given cameras are great beautiful display it's a very good all-round phone but if you're a tech enthusiast like myself you probably want the best of the best then the S24 Ultra would be the clear cut decision between the two. Hopefully this video has helped you see the main differences and to help you decide between the two. If you have any suggestions for which phone comparison you would like to see next, then hit the like button and let me know. That being said, do consider subscribing to the channel for your daily dose of the latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews and join our fast growing community of passionate tech enthusiasts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.